A Tale of Two Hygienists presents this week's tip episode. Quick and easy tips to keep you up to date and presented by the experts in the profession. Now, get ready for your unofficial tip episode. I'm Dr. Brian Novi, and I am the Chief Dental Officer at the Alliance Dental Center in Quincy, Massachusetts, which is the incubator office for the Massachusetts Public Employees Fund. And I practice clinical dentistry four to six days a week and teach uh, at a couple different dental schools and spend my spare time lecturing at different dental meetings around the world. So today I would love to talk about saliva, my favorite topic in the whole wide world. Uh, because what I've found as I travel around and as I teach cariology to dentists and dental hygienists and dental assistants and everyone in the dental ecosystem, there seems to be this misconception or misperception that the amount of saliva in your mouth is actually equated to how healthy your mouth is. And we tend to think that if you have a lot of saliva, you probably have a really healthy mouth. So in a lot of caries risk assessment activities, people tend to ask the question, does your mouth appear dry? Does it feel dry? When in fact, you can have a little bit of really good saliva or you can have a lot of really bad saliva. And point in fact is the, is the reality that every dentist has prepped a crown and not been able to produce a, a good temporary, not be able to take a good impression because that tooth is being bathed in so much saliva. So if that saliva was really good quality saliva, why would that patient need a crown to be done in the first place? That saliva should have been protecting that tooth from getting a crown. So it's not just about the quantity of saliva, it's about the quality of saliva. And a lot of people think that, well, if you don't have saliva, maybe we could just stimulate more saliva. Because if you stimulate saliva, then that's going to be good quality saliva. And I say, no, no. Just because you stimulate saliva doesn't mean you're going to actually stimulate good quality of saliva. And in fact, if your patient has Schroken syndrome and you stimulate saliva, you could actually stimulate really bad saliva that just even furthers the caries process. So in this tip episode, I really want to talk about saliva because it's such an underappreciated bodily fluid that is in my opinion, the most diagnostic fluid of the human body. But as I lead into this tip episode, as you're listening to this, it would be great if you could wander around your house or around the lunchroom in your office, go, but go find yourself some source of acid like lemon juice or lime juice or vinegar or even uh, Coke or 7-Up. Those would be great sources of acid to show you what I, what I want you to, to uh, feel in your own mouth. But also go find yourself some salt. So you're looking for a source of acid and some salt. And you could use some salty nuts if you want, like some salty sunflower seeds, those would be great. But um, you could just have a little bit of table salt too. And then later on in the tip episode, we'll give it, we'll do a hands-on activity. So what I'd like to, what I want the audience to actually understand is that just because you have saliva doesn't mean there isn't something to improve in the saliva. And very often when you look in a patient's mouth, you can figure out is the quality of the saliva really good or is the quality of the saliva poor and can it be improved somehow? So if you look into a patient's mouth and you see a lot of calculus everywhere, oddly enough, that's a really good indication that the patient has really good quality saliva. It means they have a high buffering capacity, they have a lot of ions in their saliva and it's basic. And that's why it's actually mineralizing the plaque. It's turning the plaque hard and calcifying it because there's so many excess ions in the saliva and it's basic. In the opposite of that extreme is the patient who doesn't produce any calculus at all on their teeth. And you look in their mouth and you say, oh my gosh, you must be a really good brusher. There's no tartar on your teeth. Well, actually that's an indication that the patient's saliva is so acidic, it's breaking down the calculus on their teeth and it's demineralizing the teeth. And it's actually nurturing the growth of aciduric bacteria, the bacteria that cause tooth decay, which then in turn grows acidogenic bacteria that like to live in acids. So really good quality saliva is basic. It's, in, it's a, at a pH above 6.8, even better would be above 7. When it gets above 7.2, you start to form calculus like stalagmites and stalactites on the teeth. And that's because you have a protein in your saliva, which is there by design to prevent you from forming calculus. So you have a protein in your saliva called statherin, which inhibits the primary and secondary precipitation of calcium from your saliva. So if you have statherin in your saliva, which is only there and is only functional between the pH of 6.8 to 7.2. So if the pH of your saliva goes above 7.2, statherin doesn't fold properly, and then it can't prevent calculus from forming on your teeth. So when the pH of your saliva stays above 7.2, statherin doesn't fold properly and you form calculus on your teeth like crazy. 
And oddly enough, well, not oddly enough, and we usually see that in patients who have uh, kidney disease, because when your kidneys stop functioning, your salivary glands turn into surrogate kidneys, and that actually pull urea from your bloodstream, filtered into your mouth, and it raises the pH of your mouth so high, you don't get tooth decay anymore, you form calculus like crazy. And we see these in patients and we go, oh my gosh, doesn't this patient brush their teeth? Well, they could, they could brush it every single day really, really well, and they're still gonna form calculus because their saliva is so basic, and that one protein which is there to stop calculus from forming, that one protein doesn't fold, calculus forms like crazy, and we think, oh, this patient just doesn't brush when in fact it's all about the chemistry of their saliva. So, um, so the question really becomes, how do you identify that a patient has really good quality saliva? Well, usually uh, they have a little bit of tartar on their teeth. They have, they have a little bit of calculus on their teeth. That's a good indication that their mouth or their saliva is usually basic. Uh, and usually they, they're low caries risk. You notice they don't have interproximal lesions. And if they do have any exposed root surfaces, they're hard and they're glossy uh, and they're, they're nice and smooth. Uh, if they start to demineralize, really good indication their saliva is, is probably fairly acidic. So what makes good saliva is the fact that you have an elevated pH of 6.8. Uh, you have really good ionic concentration in your saliva. So you've got calcium and you've got some phosphate. You have a, and uh, you have a lot of bicarbonate in there as well, which keeps the pH elevated. But most importantly in really good quality saliva is the abundance of proteins. And so if you have a ton of protein in your saliva, it's probably very good quality saliva, rich in calcium and phosphate at a basic pH. And in modern karyology, there's a lot of talk about how do we actually use protein in the saliva to drive oral health? Because we know that the good bacteria that grow in your teeth, they consume proteins from your saliva. And when they eat the proteins in your saliva, they poop out urea and ammonia as a byproduct of their metabolism, and they shift the biofilm pH to something that's more basic, and they create a good basic biofilm on your teeth, which can actually remineralize early caries lesions. So you can identify good quality saliva by looking for a little bit of calculus on your patient's teeth, not seeing any sort of demineralization in their mouth, and that you have an adequate amount of that saliva in your mouth. So those are the three things I'm looking for when I, when I do a patient exam. You also can notice it clinically. If you ever have noticed that when you take fluoride varnish and, you, and you're, you're wiping fluoride varnish on a patient's teeth and, and sometimes you don't get them quite dry and, and your brush goes through the saliva a little bit and you notice a booger forming on the end of your brush and you, you're, you're trying to get, you're thinking, oh, well, it's okay, I'll just, I'll just wipe this on the teeth, but you can't get it to stick to the teeth because it's sticking more to the brush and you're wiping this, goo, you're pulling this goober throughout the whole patient's mouth. You're like, just get off the brush. That's a really good indication that patient's saliva is so rich in calcium and phosphate, the chemical reaction that it's having on the brush creating that booger is what you wanted to happen on the tooth. And what it means is that you're applying fluoride varnish incorrectly in that patient's mouth. That means you're doing it wrong. You need to get all the saliva out of there, get the teeth dry, get a new brush, get some new fluoride varnish, because you cannot stop that chemical reaction that's happening on the end of that, that fluoride varnish brush. So I say, anytime you notice that booger forming on your fluoride varnish brush, it means you're doing something wrong. Or it also means the patient has really good quality saliva. But the question really becomes, how do you make good quality saliva? So if you wanna actually get a feel, no pun, you're gonna, you're gonna get a mouth feel for quality saliva. So if you take that acid that you found, whether it's lemon juice or Coke or 7-Up, or vinegar, I don't know why you would have vinegar in your dental office, but if you have vinegar for your fish and chips that you're eating at lunchtime, um, take your finger and put it, um, and if you're not, if you don't have hands on that, if you don't have hands on stuff at home to do this with you right now, just picture this in your mind and you'll probably stop, you'll start salivating anyway, because that's what we do. We salivate when you think about salivating. But if you dip your finger in your, in your acid, your lemon juice, your vinegar or something and taste it, it's sour and you notice it immediately, you start to produce a little bit of saliva. Well, okay, so just make a note of how much saliva do you feel like you produced right then and there? You, you produced a little bit. Your mouth tasted something sour and your body reacted by stimulating some saliva to try to neutralize that acid. Well, now take your salt. And what people don't realize is that when you put salt on your tongue, the sodium ion is actually a potent saliva stimulant. And more so than being a potent saliva stimulant, it actually sends a signal to your brain, which sends a signal to your salivary glands to actually increase protein synthesis. 
and it's making you generate a lot more protein. And you'll notice that when you put acid in your mouth, you produce a little bit of saliva. When you put salt in your mouth, you produce a lot of saliva and it feels thick, it feels luscious, it feels much more slippery, and there's a lot more of it. And that's because you have systemically now caused your salivary glands to change what they're producing, and you've told them, produce higher quality saliva. When you put acid in your mouth, your body is responding just to neutralize that acid and put out some saliva with some bicarbonate in it to neutralize the acid. But when you put salt on your tongue, it increases protein synthesis in your salivary glands, and then it dumps all that extra protein into your saliva. And since I've already explained how protein works in your biofilm, you'll know, you'll, you can now rest assured that you're actually feeding the good bacteria in your mouth that extra protein in your saliva, and you're nurturing the growth of good bacteria in your mouth, not just by stimulating saliva, but by stimulating really good, high-quality, protein-rich saliva. And if you want to increase, if you want to increase the amount of protein in your saliva anyway, it's really simple. Just increase the amount of protein in your diet. More protein in the diet means more protein in the saliva. And which foods are high in, in the best protein for our saliva? Spinach, soy, seafood, and nuts. And each one of those pro, each one of those foods is rich in arginine. And arginine is an amino acid that when we have more arginine in the saliva, it drives caries resistance because we've got some research which shows us that if you increase the concentration of free arginine in saliva, you decrease, you decrease a patient's caries risk. And so that is my hands-on tip episode for how to improve the quality of your own saliva, understand the quality of your patient's saliva, and actually use it to stimulate some changes in your patient's diet, which could lead to increased quality of saliva uh, for days on end. And uh, you, don't need to, you don't need to think about acids anymore. You can just think about salt and stimulate some really good saliva. Well, this has been Dr. Brian Novi, and thank you for listening to this week's tip episode. If you want more of my harebrained facts about how to generate a healthy mouth, you can check out my website, www.holymolar.com, and holy molar is spelled W-H-O-L-L-Y-M-O-L-A-R. Or you can follow me on Twitter, at Brian Novi one uh, because Brian Novi was already taken. And thank you very much to GC America for making this tip episode happen. We hope you enjoyed this week's tip episode. Be sure to reach out to our guest experts and let them know how helpful their tips were. Follow A Tale of Two Hygienists on Facebook, Instagram, and head over to ataleoftwohygienists.com and subscribe to our newsletter. You can also email us at ataleoftwohygienists at gmail.com and keep listening for more awesome content from your unofficial dental hygiene podcast. <laughs>